long last. We're ready to go. <laughs> Pin to put it as underway on this Sunday afternoon. T serving tough, always a mantra for both of these teams in South Carolina, no surprise, starting right there in the middle with an early kill. Something this team really wants to do is get off to a fast start, something they didn't do against that Kansas loss. They got dug themselves into a hole, but now they're starting fast today. Good sign. Ellie Ruprich with the kill there to get things going for South Carolina. Gamecocks the early leave. First swing for Williams results in a block for South Carolina. And a quick 2-0 start for the Gamecocks. Ruprich all over it, playing offense and defense there, uh, shutting this Duke offense down early to set the tone. Here's Elena Johnson to serve, the Kershaw South Carolina native. Eight kills yesterday for the Gamecocks. Williams again. Great dig by Harris. Finesse play there by Whitesides. Duke with the attack. It's Keefe, and that is barely in. And South Carolina may want to challenge, and they will. Another look. Big swing from the outside. That's a deep ball. That's a deep ball. We'll take another look. What do you think? You locked saw it on the replay in or out. What do you think? I'm thinking in. It looked like line to me, okay. but also we're up here in the crow's nest. <laughs> Should be a fairly quick review, you would imagine. There's our officials looking on. Another glance at it here. I think it's out. This might be a better look. I don't know. I don't know. The shadow of the ball is tripping me up a little bit, too. Looks like lying to me. Remember, call on the court was in. You've got to have clear and convincing evidence to overturn it. And I don't know that from the replays that we've seen, Amanda, that, that there is a angle that's going to overturn this call. Yeah, not enough evidence could be the the verdict here. But a lengthy review, South Carolina challenging immediately. And seems like we have at this point reached a verdict. Point for the Blue Devils. So the challenge unsuccessful for South Carolina. And Duke on the board. Taylor Williams will have the honor. Williams, one of those talented freshmen for the Blue Devils. Jolene Nagel really praising this freshman class that she has here in 2024. Godshaw tried to get it over, but could not. Lift was called there against the Blue Devils and South Carolina adds on that play in the blockers and just being very fast at the net for South Carolina has been uh, an emphasis ever since Mendoza got to South Carolina they've been known for their their blocking their middle blocking hoping that that defense can really spark offense it was an area where Duke struggled against Kansas yesterday slowing down those Jayhawk middles Keith goes the other way dug out nicely by Jordan to the back row Godshaw a set now for Keith the left-handed attack is blocked out and the Blue Devils to within one. South Carolina knows that Keefe is going to be the one that Duke goes to when they want to clean up their offense. They want a big hit. And she just took advantage of that block there. A big tool off the block for it to land out. Carrie Keefe with both of Duke's kills so far this afternoon. Powerful swing blocked. Keefe right in the middle. Oh, great play by Harris. The Columbia native playing for her hometown team, Ngazi Elo. Ooh. And there's Harris again. Another back row attack. Good rally here. Elo looking to terminate and does. Great ball placement there with Elo. Long rally can get rotations out of sorts. We'll take another look at this one. Great rally though all around. Offense thrown off a little bit with the set. Elo able to place it in an open spot in that court. 
Godshaw, the rookie out of Elcott City, Maryland. 14 digs against Kansas in a losing effort yesterday. And we get it at a point here for the Gamecocks Blue Devils with that net infraction. So South Carolina able to break the serve. White sides picking up a kill, her first of the day. We'll see more of that, I'm sure. I would imagine. <laughs> Probably a pretty good bet. And a good problem for South Carolina to have, as that one skims the top of the net and gets over, from a defensive standpoint, that one hits the goal. It is in play. White sides off the tip. And there is another one for the graduate student from Greenville. Victoria Harris, just the freshman libero, made her first career start on Friday and just continues to excel. We talked to her before this match, and she said she thinks she's been doing pretty well, and I have to say so far, I agree. Well, that's a good problem to have, right? South Carolina's got a couple of really solid players that can play the libero position, but it's been Harris who has won the job in the preseason for Coach Mendoza's team. White sides again, off the tip, blocked out. Gamecocks by three. Her swing is so powerful. It's either going to go deep on that back line, which we've seen a couple times, even cross court. Duke's been able to get that ball up. Not pretty, but get it up at that time. Another tool for white sides. Doesn't matter how it looks. It just matters how effective yep. <laughs> it is. Here's Grace Penn of the net, setting in the middle. Cato is on the board. Riley Cato, who has been so good for the Blue Devils over the first two matches with a phenomenal hitting percentage of over 580. Only three errors for Cato over the first two matches. Efficiency is big, especially when you're in a weekend like this where you're just seeing tough competition every day. Tipped out and put away there for Anna Wilson. But pardon me, it's Anadi with her first, the senior middle blocker out of Louisiana. Abby Anadi, a very vocal leader on this team. She does a lot with the university, doing a lot of um, public speaking and things like that. She's a, a natural leader. Anadi had a great season last year, 129 blocks, fourth most in a single season in Gamecock history. And how about that finesse play for South Carolina? 8-4 USC. It might not be the coolest kill, you know, it might not be a smackdown or a little bump kill, but a little push, that's uh, playing smarter, not harder there. Very effective again, South Carolina using every aspect of the game here in the early part of the opening set. Duke trying to find a rhythm, and Ghazi Elo with her second kill of the set. Second kill and seemingly in that same back left corner for South Carolina. They're not able to read her as well as they want to. Elo, who was moved to more of a pin this year by Jolene Nagel, that's not playing just the middle anymore, really speaks to how much she's developed her craft, doesn't it? Yeah, Coach Nagel talking about how She's so she's just such a phenomenal athlete that they've been able to move her around to the pin to find that offense more consistently. South Carolina has found offense in a variety of ways here in the opening set. And Coach Mendoza has to be pleased with the way his club is performing, hitting 500 so far in the early stages of set one. Julie Crawford ready to serve. One of those beach volleyball players at South Carolina as well. Yeah, I asked her what's the, what was the hardest part of the transition, and she said the court wasn't as nice to her body as the sand was. Williams, the freshman, had it denied. Penn sets it up and then short-armed it into this net. What do you think that South Carolina is doing right now to keep Duke so off rhythm in this first set? I think South Carolina has played a big part in the way that they've been able to stay alive in these rallies and make decent attacks. You know, there haven't been really bad sets recently because they've had good digs and good serve receive. Riley Cato with another, her second. Rubrick a little late to that block right there, and Duke took advantage. Quick set, quick movement, block just, that wall wasn't there. Riley Cato is quickly becoming one of those players that was maybe under the radar last year that will be a focal point for everybody's scouting report now. Serves that one a little long. Blue Devils with the service error. That's been something Duke has done well this weekend is serving it. The Blue Devils entering action today with 15 aces, but 19 errors. And as we talked about really all weekend for any team, but especially for Duke, can't afford to give up those free points which it's not surprising. You have so many errors when you want to serve aggressively, but you have to find that balance. Blue Devils out of system there. And tipped 
Another point, South Carolina pulling away. They lead by six. Tyra Smith, the 6'3 sophomore. We were talking to Coach earlier today, Mendoza, saying that they'll put her in a lot because of her length up there and her ability to get up on that ball, and that's what we just saw there. Smith has played well this weekend after missing most of last year with an injury that was suffered in preseason training. Taylor Williams, the rookie in her Duke debut, having a very nice weekend. Entered action today with 17 kills. She's added another one to her ledger here. Great tip, looking like she was going up for a powerful swing. South Carolina couldn't read it. Great placement. Grace Penn to serve. Again in the middle, Godshaw there. And Carrie Keith ran into her setter, somehow got it over. Blue Devils very out of system, but they get the point as South Carolina commits the air. Just an awkward hit there from Elena Johnson. I think you're more likely to get a kill when your whole hand hits the ball there. We have not seen the best of swings from either side here in this first set. Duke getting out of rhythm a lot lately. And another service error, the second for the Blue Devils. It's Johnson to serve, Kershaw, South Carolina native. Eight kills, five digs, a couple of blocks, and an ace against Colgate in that sweep yesterday. Key for the left hand. Goes line, Harris digs it out. They set the opposite way, and another big swing for Smith. The sophomore with another kill, and the Gamecocks lead 14-8. Look how big Tyra Smith is swing is. She gets up, her arms are long, her wingspan's long, to be able to get up over the net, that even if you can read her, it's hard to get that ball up. Serve to Ingram. Williams, who's been the hot hand for the Blue Devils in this first set, back row attack. A great dig by Ingram. Set up for Williams. Played nicely there by Jordan. Good rally here. Keith on the opposite side. White sides, puts it away. 15 to eight. South Carolina out to the early lead. And we step aside here at Cameron. He was second in the team last year in dig, so she's able to be a rotational player that's on the court constantly making things happen. Coach Mendoza talked about before the match today just how much they're going to rely on her, which is sometimes a good thing and a bad thing because she does do it all for the South Carolina team. Duke hasn't been able to silence her yet. South Carolina has played very good defense. Another swing, and the Blue Devils just bump it over with Ingram. Dug out nicely, almost out of self-defense there by Penn, <laughs> and it's Carrie Keith who gets the point for the Blue Devils. Out of self-defense, I like that. Yeah, that swing is too powerful, but good job on Duke's behalf to be able to make something out of that big swing from Smith. I am curious, as someone who played, Keith is that left-handed hitter. You don't see a lot of left-handed swings. Does that impact the defense at all when you see the ball coming from a different angle? It's definitely unnatural for you to read it. It's not very quick to read it like you would somebody who hits with the, with the right hand. You're kind of distracted for a second there. That could lead to a little hesitation. Keith again goes short and gets the point. So back-to-back -back points for Duke coming out of the timeout. Whitesides needs to trust Harris there. She's been all over this court so far today. Uh, let her pick that one up so she can get the swing in. You mentioned trust. Is that just something that's going to develop the more you play and the more you play against different competition? Oh, definitely. And this team, this South Carolina team, has been trying to, to build trust and accountability and chemistry this season because you do have some young players mixed with some key transfers. Um, and that's what a road trip like this will do. It'll build that chemistry. Whitesides gets the put away there. A lot of team building moments for South Carolina this weekend. Talking with Coach Mendoza, they went to the Angus Barn, a ph phenomenal steakhouse here locally for one dinner, and then actually went to dinner at Brooke Doherty's house last night. She lives in nearby Holly Springs, so a chance to really have some team bonding here uh, over the weekend. Yeah, and we'll see that reflect on the court as the season continues. Blocked, <laughs> fighting through the double block there was Keith to get the point, pulls Duke to within five. I wish I would have known they were going to the Angus Barn. I would have, been, I would have asked to go. <laughs> Joined alongside. Take a look at this Keith kill right here. Big swing right through the blocks. That wall needs to be tighter. Those hands need to be tighter on South Carolina's end. Keith's finding a way. Godshaw puts it in play for the Blue Devils. 
And blocked nicely by South Carolina. Another chance for Whitesides. And a great pancake by Penn. Here's Keefe off a curl. The Blue Devils very out of system here. Can South Carolina answer? They cannot. They say it's out and a point for Duke. Let's Great take another look. by Victoria Harris there to get this set up. Riley Whitesides looking for a line, sees the wide open net area there, but too far to the left. Even better play by Penn not to touch that ball as well. Pulls Duke to within four. South Carolina unable to answer back. Can Duke terminate Keith, who's had the hot hand? Boy, Harris has been omnipresent for South Carolina this set. A oh, tough set there. Godshaw just a little off kilter. White sides. Godshaw on the dig. Pin the set. Elo the attack. Again for Keefe. Duke to within three. Amazing cut by Keefe there. Amazing cut. Able to read the block. That's a very hard spot to get. She's got six kills now. Seems like all of them came in the last couple minutes. Duke in the middle of a 3-0 scoring run, getting some momentum back and prompting South Carolina to call their first timeout. What have you seen from the Blue Devils out of this that, that timeout when South? A lot of young players playing key roles for both of these teams. But then you also have some key transfers that have stepped yep. up for Duke. It's, you know, a setter for South Carolina. They brought in um, an outside hitter as well and just some key pieces that are trying to blend right now during the season opener. Yeah, Sarah Jordan, the transfer from Towson for South Carolina. Grace Penn, the Boston College transfer for Duke. The setter there is having a nice start to her Blue Devil career. Ten assists already today, looking for a block of the Blue Devils. And that hits the antenna. And South Carolina coming out of that timeout does extend the lead. The Gamecocks now up by four. Block just needs to be a little tighter on that one, and that one might have been tooled, and Duke might have gotten the point there. McElvin to serve. Cato, and another one for Riley Cato. Every coach we've talked to this weekend has talked about the importance of slowing down Kerry Keefe. Not many have talked about the importance of slowing down Riley Cato. That might change after this weekend. Yeah, I think she, she might be on a lot of people's scouting reports after this weekend. Kerry Keefe serves. Oh, good play there by Cato, who gets back-to-back -back points in the middle for the Blue Devils. Volleyball is such a game of runs, as many games are, and Duke has really taken momentum here with their net play. Just a one-on-one -on -one block play right there. Keith to serve again. Back row flip over. Pin back set. Cato, oh yes. And all of a sudden, Duke to within one. Cato throws her hands up after that hit, and she's like, that's probably not what I was going for, but that'll do. <laughs> Better to be lucky than good sometimes. And served out by Kerry Keith. Breaks a 3-0 Duke scoring run. And you know, all of a sudden, a first set that really felt like South Carolina had all the momentum. Duke's found a way to pull it within two and created a pretty entertaining opening stanza. Pin for Cato. Good play by Harris on the line. Cross court, tipped by Godshaw. Gamecocks extend the lead. Elena Johnson, a junior on this team, knows how to have that short-term memory. Struggled in serve, receive, and digging just a couple rallies ago and able to make up for it on the offensive side. Wide side, serve short. Good play by Godshaw. Elo flings it down the near line. Back row attack, and another one for South Carolina. I said they need to get other people involved on offense or just have Riley Whitesides hit from a different part of the court. Maybe that'll throw Duke off enough. I love a back row attack. That one, she gets up high to get over the net there. 
Whitesides with her sixth kill already to tie over the match high, prompting Duke through a lot in terms of injuries over her high school career. A couple of leg injuries there for the South Carolina libero, and nice to see her staying close to home. Finally got healthy, and according to Coach Mendoza, his libero is playing, quote, lights out. South Carolina trying to turn out the lights on this opening set, leading by four. Whitesides has the serve. Elo with the attack for Duke. Good play there by Wilson. Sent over by Johnson. South Carolina gets back in rhythm as Elo attacks, and not much Harris could do there. Duke to within three. Elo tooling it off the block in her first attack. Then her second one, she cuts it cross court, throwing that South Carolina defense off, a ball that Harris couldn't get, a rare ball that Harris couldn't get. Gives the serve back to Duke. Elo with a service error. Duke does not have an ace today. They do have four service errors. And with those four service errors, four points for South Carolina. Look what the difference in the set is right now. Said so many times, especially in this game, which is focus on what you can control on your side of the net. Um, and that'll help you at least keep the game close as far as working on your own mistakes. Here's Cranford, the Colorado native. Led the team with a 23 and 12 beach record last year. Look at that play in the middle for South Carolina. It's Johnson again to put it away with the Gamecocks. But what a serve setting up this overpass for South Carolina. Rupert putting it away. Yeah, Rupert coming out of the timeout. Cranford will continue on. Blue Devils unable to stop it anymore in this opening set. South Carolina three points away from a victory. In stands at number one. Another short serve. Nearly an ace. Williams. And the Blue Devils break the serve. Lauren Will or Taylor Williams with her second kill. Her 18th of the year. It's one of those freshman impact mm -hmm. players that I'm sure Coach Nagel is learning a lot from in these first two games. They've got one of their more consistent servers back there now to the Blue Devils and Riley Cato. Skims the net. And another one for Johnson, the junior. And South Carolina gets it right back. Elena Johnson, we talked about her performance this weekend. She's been able to do a little bit of everything, and this is what South Carolina needs. Another player who can kill the ball, who can provide some offense for this team, as Duke is well aware of white sides. And Ingram just a tough serve receive. It's set point for the Gamecocks. First ace for either club today. And many set points here for South Carolina. Ingram gets served again. Here's Williams off the block. Gamecocks corral the opening set. Rubrik again right there on the pen. Well, unless it's, it's a need be situation. And for Duke, try to get up there and take away those big kills. Jordan the serve to start set number two. Attack from White who gets the start here. After not playing in the first set, and South Carolina quickly goes to work offensively. The Gamecocks once again just using their outsides to get those points. That time it was Smith who gets it again. Duke's going to need their net play uh, to be able to slow down these hits and create a, a, a decent, you know, bump set spike eventually. Pretty simple game. Bump, yeah. <laughs> set, spike. Sounds simple. Point. Hit. There we go. Simple game. <laughs> Gary Keefe. With another, her seventh to lead all players. Yeah, really easy game. I don't, I don't know why we make it so complicated. Yeah, you should get down there then. Yeah, Tell yeah. them that. Yeah, how about no? <laughs> There's a reason I'm sitting up here beside you today. <laughs> Here's Lauren Ingram for the Blue Devils. Harris has the serve receive. And another attack. Ingram digs it out. A good swing by Johnson, but couldn't finish it. Johnson, and the Blue Devils can't keep it going. Kind of a tough ball to handle there for Grace Penn, and the South Carolina Gamecocks again finding a lot of different weapons here this afternoon. The more I watch, the more I see Duke's blockers are there. It's just a matter of getting up in time and actually 
curving your hands to be able to put the ball down and not let it fly out of bounds. Serve to Ingram, who's had a tough go of the serve receive here today. Bumped over by White. White sides, finesse is one, pancaked by the Blue Devils. Now Keith tries to go cross court. South Carolina ready for it. Keith swings again. Tried to hit one to the back row. Penn sets. This is Elo. Johnson, a great play. White side sets it up. Boy, a good rally. Keith terminates. Really started with great defense with the Blue Devils, and that's what led to the offense. Awesome rally here. Able to read the tip there. Nice pancake from the Blue Devils. Big swing by Sarah Jordan to finish it. Or Keith, sorry. <laughs> Keith puts it away. Blue Devils have tied it up, and now Godshaw gets the serve. Keith again. Blocked, and Harris couldn't get there in time. But she'll try. That's something Coach Mendoza told us. Harris will go all out, and she did deal with injuries later in her high school yep. career. So Coach Mendoza said as long as there's not a barricade or anything, he's okay with her going after it. Blue Devils out to the one-point lead very early. White sides. Ingram there on the back row. Elo had it blocked out. Duke just trying to fight through the block as best they can this afternoon. And that's one way to do it. Duke scored the last three. South Carolina able to break the momentum. They go right back to Elena Johnson, who has become really a second weapon for South Carolina. Really balanced attack for the Gamecocks today. Johnson has her fourth kill already. Whiteside's leading the way. She has six for the Gamecocks this afternoon. Now Harris serves. Back set for Keith. Harris right there again. And Whitesides had it tipped a couple times. Godshaw had to avoid her teammate. And that one really disastrous from the start there for the Blue Devils. Just nothing they could do on that swing by Whitesides. Great hustle. But yeah, it all goes back to Harris with that great dig to be able to get a decent set out of a tough attack from Duke. Keith had to tie her shoe. And now Harris trying to find a little momentum for the Gamecocks here in this second set. Cato, yes, right there in the middle. The fifth of the match for Riley Cato. Duke able to attack from a little bit inside from the pins there, kind of mixing it up, confusing a little bit of South Carolina's blockers, getting them out of position there to be able to find a hole. When you say attack from inside the pins, for maybe the novice okay. that's at home listening, what, what, what does that mean to maybe a casual volleyball fan? Just obviously you've got your right side and your left side hitters, but that set was in more. Not a middle hit necessarily, but inside a little bit more, getting the blockers kind of off their normal stance. And Ghazi Elo with her fifth kill. with 10 kills yesterday, and she's been a little bit quiet in that first set, but maybe that's what something Coach Nagel wants to happen this, this set is to be able to unlock her a little bit. Can you talk about how difficult the transition is for a player like Elo who maybe have play, has played middle your entire career and now getting moved to a pin this year? How much work is required to do that? What is interesting is when you're in high school, you kind of do it all a little bit. I'm sure that she did in high school as well. They move you outside, they move you middle. Honestly, outside is easier. I know I've worked with a lot of middles who say you kind of always feel like you're in the way when you're a middle blocker or a middle hitter. Outside, you have more space to get that wind up and approach. And I think that's something that she's really good at. And Coach Nagel said she's a really, just a really good athlete. So it comes naturally to her. In South Carolina, great crowd here this afternoon. Duke leading by three. Sent over that time by Anadi. And that is in. Boy, it's all going right for the Blue Devils right now.
No challenge from South Carolina. Blue Devils did hit it right on the line, and now it's Kerry Keith who serves again. Smith to Ingram on the back row. Key for the attack. Blocked. Kept alive by Jordan. Harris gets it over. Cato finesse play right for Harris. White sides. Oh, a powerful swing. Gamecocks down three. South Carolina taking advantage of that easy ball coming over. Harris able to give a perfect pass to allow for a perfect set. And Whitesides taking advantage of the hole in the block. Feels like it doesn't need to always be a perfect set for Whitesides <laughs> either. I think she's used to making making uh, do with what, she's, what she has. Elo, and that's out. A little bit too much pace behind that one. South Carolina trying to form a bit of a comeback here. Early in this second set, Coach Mendoza didn't like what he saw from his team, so took that early timeout. It's working right now. They've got the momentum on their side. Penn tried to dump it over. South Carolina ready for it. Elo off a tough set. Doesn't matter. Gets the point anyway. Elo with six. Six kills now for her. They've really gotten her more involved in this set. Despite just one error coming the rally beforehand, she steps back up to the plate, hitting this one out. A little consternation, it seemed like, there between the coaching staff that were ready to go again. And Elo with the service error. Five service errors for Duke already this afternoon, but their first of this second set. My high school coach always told me it's better to have your serve go out instead of into the net. Um, it's a, a better service error, but in this sense, you got to just make it in bounds. Huh. Served into Ingram. Keith, and that is out, was not touched. Gamecocks to within one. I guess there's varying degrees of bad then, right? Like it's bad either way. Well, because it gives the other team a chance to take it. Sure. If it goes in the net, the other team doesn't have to even decide. It's like a base is loaded to walk yeah. in baseball. <laughs> exactly. Blocked in the net nicely. Good play by Anadi, who was right there to help combine on the block for the Gamecocks. Seems, seems like she's been doing a lot of work uh, today, but this is her first block of the day. She's been in position and ready to go. and the South Carolina team. That's their big edge today is their blocking and their net play. South Carolina after the timeout has tied it up. Duke looking to reclaim the lead and they do. When they need a spark they go right to one of their leaders, Kerry Keefe, for their 10th kill of the contest. Keefe last season tallied over or at least 10 kills in every match besides three. So she's looking to keep that consistency in this season. Second team All-ACC performer a year ago, and if the opening weekend is any indication, will be another All-ACC selection this year. Keith serves. And a block. Ingram was right there for Duke, combining with White, and the Blue Devils with a two quick two-point advantage. Back row attack, another block. White again. After not having a block at all today, back to back for the Blue Devils. I think they definitely heard us. I just said that South Carolina's advantage is their net play, but hey, this is something that Duke needed to change if they wanted to stay in this ball game. Right back up to the Gamecocks. Elena Johnson again. Five kills already for the junior out of South Carolina. Take a look at that block there. Duke just was not there in time. Elena taking full advantage of the free court. Seesaw second set continues. Cranford serves. Back row Keith. Jordan. Now Keith from the back row. Godshaw couldn't make the play. 
South Carolina right back to within one. Hey, last time Whitesides took that back row attack, she got shut down at the net by Duke. This time, let me just see if you guys can take this little tip in there. It's found some open court. Just over for Cranford. Ingram, good play by South Carolina. Oh, the Gamecocks ready for that one. For the moment, anyway. Blue Devils get the point. Not exactly how South Carolina drew it up. Not how the Blue Devils drew it up either, but Duke will certainly take it. Grace Penn with the serve. And blocked out. Duke gaining a lot of momentum in the middle part of this second set. A lot of that momentum has come from Elena Johnson. She's gotten way more involved in this second set, able to really find rhythm and get some good sets to her that she's been able to work with and find her way off the block. Ingram had it blocked out. So Duke all of a sudden is finding a way to fight through that South Carolina block, something they had a problem doing earlier today. Duke stretched the lead out to two. Elo, that's long. Duke asking for a tip and perhaps a challenge. Coach Mendoza looking on. And there's Jolene Nagel who will ask for the review. Duke thinking this one was tipped. Let's take a look. Oh, hard to tell there. I didn't see any fingers bend back. That's normally the sign. Do you like this challenge by Duke? Yeah. I mean, right now, it's a one-point game right now. You've got you've got to keep momentum, even if there's a sliver of chance that you might have it. I don't think that South Carolina ever touched it. I don't either. But that ball was coming in fast, real time. That slow motion makes it too easy yeah, for us. Yeah. <laughs> one more look here. Watch Smith there. Now, I think it misses her arm. Yeah. So this should be a relatively quick review, if there is such a thing. <laughs> I am all for getting the calls right, but there's got to be some sort of limit on how long you can look at it. Like, no, nobody wants to come watch the players just stand around. We just need a faster review system in every sport. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk today. <laughs> I guess, I guess. So the review finally concluded. And we're going to straighten up the papers. And the call was confirmed. Point belongs to South Carolina. Important wording there, confirm, meaning they did have clear and convincing evidence. And normally you look for a spin on the ball um, in a different direction or if those fingers bend, but sure. it looks like Smith was really framing her body inward on that block. So South Carolina down by one and a chance to serve for the tie. Keefe. Dug out nicely by Jordan at the net. Blocked out by Duke. And the Gamecocks have tied it up. South Carolina trying to win their second straight over the Blue Devils. One here in 2017. Duke trying to answer and reclaim the lead. Godshaw for Keefe. Tipped a couple of times. South Carolina sets it up. 
Penn in the middle, and a powerful swing by White. Her first kill as a Blue Devil gives Duke a one-point lead. That's exactly what you want from a possession like that. You get that free, easy, free ball over the net. You get the perfect pass, the perfect set to be able to do something quick in the middle, and that's what they did, giving South Carolina not enough time to get there to put up that wall. Spot of perspiration on the floor. Look at Harris doing it all. Offensively, defensively, cleaning the floor. Probably popped the popcorn of the concession stand, too. She's used to doing it all and having her hands full. She told me she's got 11 nieces and nephews, so she's got a big family, a lot of supporters, a lot of fans out there. Hope that a lot of them are watching this afternoon. Gamecocks leading, or down by one, leading one set to none. Godshaw serving for Duke. Well, that was a bit of a miss set. Probably one that you just flip over there if you're the South Carolina setter. And said it's set up nicely for the Blue Devils. Right there in the middle with Riley Cato. Her seventh of the contest. And the Blue Devils again leading by two. Duke making South Carolina pay for their mistakes with those easy passes, those over passes. Being able to set up a solid offense. Look what happens when they're actually in order. Duke hitting 265 here in the second set. South Carolina hitting just 192, so the Blue Devils have taken South Carolina's rhythm away. After the Gamecocks had such a phenomenal offensive opening set, the Blue Devils have found a rhythm, and South Carolina calls their final timeout. All Blue Devils right now, Duke scored the last three. In South Carolina's sweep against Kansas when they lost, Kansas held them to a 119 hitting percentage when they're not swinging in three of the weekend. Crowd into it here with the Blue Devils looking to get back in the match. Godshaw out of the timeout. Penn sets it up for Cato. And that is out. Short-armed it maybe a little bit there and drew just a smidgen of the top of the net. I like it when Duke takes those, those attacks in the middle when they're avoiding just the outside hits because that helps them get around South Carolina's blockers. Good serve by Harris. Cato, or beg your pardon, Keefe with the attack. White sides, and that's where South Carolina probably feels like they need to go get Whitesides more involved. If there's anybody who can spark this offense right now, it's going to be Whitesides. And not an, a beautiful set from Harris. Um, Whitesides able to make that uh, adjustment there and come a little bit in and take that long set to be able to put it down. Harris serves, looking for the tie. Elo had it blocked, punched over by Cato. South Carolina out of system. Penn. Key free balls it over. Wide sides, a bump. Elo, Duke by two. Again, Duke taking advantage of the free ball, getting to set up their offense here, and Elo prospering from it. Her sixth kill of the day, two errors. She's been finding her rhythm, though, lately. Now a chance for Duke to really pull away with Kerry Keefe at the service line, who has two aces this season. Whitesides had that one blocked. Punched or dumped over. Godshaw, Keefe, and the Blue Devils couldn't quite get that one to hit line. Great dig by the libero for Duke. Just couldn't keep that one alive there. Falling just short of out. Elo having a great second set, but having a couple errors here in the wrong times. Now can South Carolina tie it up? Off the block. Elo, oh. another one. Was she still in the air for that second hit? It felt like it happened so quick. Let's take a look. First swing. She's up, comes back. She pops right back up. South Carolina didn't pop back up with her. Now it's Elo who's had the hot hand for the Blue Devils. Whitesides goes short. 
Ingram down the line, dug out nicely, but another point for the Blue Devils. South Carolina into the net. Gamecocks are out of timeouts. Really feels like South Carolina needs a side out here, doesn't it? I agree. They need to find themselves a little bit. Too many errors. There it is. Anadi goes right down the line. Not much that Guy Shaw could do there. Just her second kill yep. of the day, but she has been active up there at the net. They get her more involved. Um, that gives them a triple uh, threat up front. It does feel like that needs to be more of what South Carolina relies on moving forward. Whiteside's trying to do it all for South Carolina, but certainly needs a little bit of help. Doesn't matter how much help you have, you're not going to stop that swing from Riley Cato. Anadi just extremely late to that block. Duke making her pay for that huge hole. Unable to pick that one up with the speed. Cato now one dig away from double figures. And the first ace of the afternoon for Jolene Nagel's club. Cato's third ace of the season, and it is all going right for the Blue Devils this afternoon, at least in the second set. Watch Duke maybe come back to McElving to try to get them out of sync again. Yep, there it is. And a nice play by White Sides to find that soft spot in the Duke defense. Boy, if South Carolina, and they're only down by three, Amanda, if they could find a way to steal this set, which really feels like what it would be, a steal of a set for South Carolina, that would really change the momentum after the Blue Devils have played so well. And all of a sudden, just a two-point match. If you're Duke, when do you th think about maybe taking a timeout? I'd say before they tied up. But Nagel's been doing this a lot longer than I <laughs> <laughs> Back row attack by Keefe right there on time. Blue Devils by three. No panic at all by the Blue Devils. I think Nagel's relying in her what she calls a leadership council. She's got five captains representing this team. You've got some experienced players coming back that can step up and get people out of funks if need be without taking a timeout. At the net, blocked nicely by South Carolina. Here's attack by White again, and South Carolina on the block. Ruprick was there. That one is out. Gamecocks hanging around. Literally hanging around that net, shutting down Duke's offense, just one after the other, giving South Carolina's defense a little break there in the back row. Now Sarah Jordan, the Towson transfer. Remember the CAL rookie team a couple years ago? Oh, look at wow. Whitesides keeping it alive for South Carolina. Here's Keefe. Oh. oh, tremendous by the Gamecocks. Now another one for Ingram, oh. and it's set point for Duke. Even after that amazing dig, or I don't even know if you call it a dig when you just take one to the chest like that from Sarah Jordan to keep that ball alive. Duke able to finish that rally and hopefully for them finish the set. There's Coach Mendoza, another spot of perspiration on the court. Duke serving for a second set. White sides, that one tipped. So South Carolina now to within two. Remember, first to 25, win by two. So South Carolina's got to make a little bit of a move here. Johnson again to serve. Here's Keefe. Had it blocked. South Carolina down one. 
You know, we talked about Whiteside sparking this offense, but look at this block by her getting up there. And she's not the tallest player on their team. She's 5'11", but her timing was perfect. Arms stretched out, able to shut that one down. Elo dug out by Harris. South Carolina looking for the tie. Whitesides, and we're tied at 24. Timeout Duke. The Gamecocks have charged back. And what a second set here in Cameron. And we talked about it a minute ago. South Carolina needed to get Whitesides more involved. They did here. Harris with that big dig to set this one up. Whiteside coming off her block, her solo block, able to seal it with the kill. 24-24. Here's Elo to give Duke the lead. Nine kills for Ngazi Elo, one of three Blue Devils that are near double figures. Elo's power has gotten in, gotten her into some trouble this set, but she's been able to persevere and really hone that power, uh, especially on that kill right there. Now, set point for Duke. Wow. Six service errors for the Blue Devils. Coming at the most inconvenient time, it seems. They always do. <laughs> yeah, that really isn't a good time to have a service error. Never a good time. <laughs> Here's Harris to serve for the lead. Tough serve on Ingram. Back set for Keith, goes line, it's tipped. And it's set point again for Duke. Duke's trying to find creative ways through that block, whether it's a tool, a push. Uh, that block needs to be stronger for South Carolina to shut down tips like that. Gotcha over to play it. Here's Elo, and wow. what a play to keep it alive by Jordan. Whitesides ties it up. I love Whitesides' reactions when she gets a kill, but I think I like her teammates' reactions better. After this big swing, you'll see Victoria Harris in the back throw her arms up, just happy to be able to get possession back to try and close this one out. Now South Carolina again serving for the lead. It's the set that will never end. Cato puts Duke up by a point. Duke will have another chance to end it now. Ten kills for Cato, becoming the second Blue Devil to reach double figures. And Duke will get Christina Bar Barrow in to serve. Elo goes out. The second set belongs to Duke. The Blue Devils hold on. And not the way you want to start off with the service error. Duke able to get their first ace in of the day in that second set, but unable to follow it up yet. Johnson. Gotcha on the serve, receive. Keith. Oh, great dig that time by Jordan. Another attack, another block by Duke. And the Gamecocks could not recover. Here's Kerry Keith to serve. Smith hits it long. Just the second error for Smith this afternoon to go along with her five kills. South Carolina only has wide sides right now in terms of double figure kills. Maybe looking for a secondary option on the offensive end. Wide sides had that one blocked. Nice play by Harris to keep it alive. Wide sides tries again. Nearly paid off. Smith. Godshaw. Ingram bumps it over. 
blocked at the net. Great job by South Carolina, but Cato terminates for Duke. That right there, Duke, Duke staying composed despite getting thrown off on the rotation, passing over a free ball, but able to make something up of it as South Carolina with the overpass. Great play by the Blue Devils there. Wide sides, that's tipped. I feel like Duke has done a nice job of trying to take white sides away lately. Yeah, maybe it's on the, you know, we talk about Mendoza talking about Keefe trying to say you either avoid or, or take her out of the game in a way, and Duke's been able to do that. Harris will serve. And Ghazi Ela with the right hand. And that one was not tipped. Just another powerful swing that results in an error. Keefe down the line and in. Right now, it kind of seems like we're having this battle between Keefe and Whitesides. Which which hitter can get their offense going here? And right now, it's Keefe building a lot of momentum. So the Blue Devils back to a one-point lead. Elo ready to serve. And another service error. Duke has one ace today, but they've got eight errors. Not a great serve percentage for Jolene Nagel's team. Yeah, and now South Carolina needs to capitalize when they get the ball back in that kind of way where it didn't really take effort on their side of the net. They need to take advantage of that, and now they got a chance to take the lead. Crucial third set. Even at one apiece. Great well, serve. Better play by Godshaw to keep it alive. Off the tip. Set for Ingram. Now when pinball is around, Penn finally gets it over. Whitesides had that one rejected. She'll try again. A third time. Now Keefe. Oh, great play. Whitesides again. Goes short. Oh, Godshaw, another great dig. Here's Keefe on the back row. Back row attack. In for the Gamecocks. What a rally, and what a point for South Carolina. Amazing digs, both sides, but let's focus on Sarah Jordan, number 10 there for South Carolina. Reaches and grabs those awkward hits that Keefe was spilling out, and she keeps that rally alive for South Carolina to finish it. It was Johnson who terminated it for the Gamecocks. They lead by one, trying to add to the lead here. Johnson again goes short. Here's Keefe with the left hand. Rejected. Oh, great play by Keefe. Cato, another nice play by South Carolina. Here's Whitesides, and it's over for Duke. Another attempt, and another point for Johnson. South Carolina leads by two. I love the excitement from these teams when they fight so much during these rallies and you've earned the point there. Lisbeth Mc, McElving over there for South Carolina, the sophomore DS, defensive specialist. Uh, she's been able to pick up those digs um, to keep those rallies alive. And she nearly serves for an ace. Duke just able to get that one back over. Back set and not a whole lot that Duke could do there as Underwood just played it. Now Ingram has to finesse it over. Duke a bit out of system. Here's Whitesides. Couldn't take advantage. The block, brilliant again for Duke. Whitesides with 35 attack attempts. She's getting the ball the most over there for South Carolina. She's bound to have get shut down there. Cato serves. At the net, White had her blocked. Oh, what a play by Penn. Tied at six. Talk about 
lulling somebody to sleep. <laughs> this is something we haven't seen from Duke today so far. Uh, Grace Penn, the setter, the graduate, the Boston College transfer, able to play around with the net there. And vision, setters' visions are insane. They're able to see what's going on and just try to place that so quickly without giving anything away in her body movement to send that one over. It's crazy Harris couldn't get there as we've seen her all over this court today. Just have to watch the eyes of the setter there. And Penn didn't want to give too much away with where she was looking, but finally finds that soft spot. Blue Devils have scored the last two. Riley Cato has the honor. White sides even there gives South Carolina the lead again. <laughs> That's one of those that if you're Kerry Keefe, not much you got going on there. Especially when she's able to get set up. Whiteside's able to get so uh, set up so quickly there um, with her approach and her step up to swing there. Very quick, um, hard to get in place. Underwood serve receive. Here's Ingram. Cross court, Harris on the dig. Set for the back row. That one grazes the net and is out. So another error on South Carolina. Gamecocks are hitting well under 100 for this second set. Duke not a whole lot better. The Blue Devils hitting 111 right now. So this has certainly been a defensive showcase this afternoon. And has not been a clinic on how to serve either. Despite the service errors on Duke's behalf, South Carolina really hasn't been able to take advantage and pull away here uh, since that first set. They've been battling back and forth these, um, in the second set and now early on in this one. Served in for Underwood. Keith cross court. Another back row attack for White Sides. And wow. Duke find a, finds a way. Keefe, tip, a couple times. Back row, White Sides puts it home. White Sides taking multiple attempts from back row today, and I think she's really finding her footing, being able to visualize where Duke is setting up in the middle with back row's attack. It's really hard as a defense to be able to figure out where they're going. That middle block can only be in one spot uh, with their hands stretched as far as they can. And South Carolina with a rare service error, their first today. And guys, the Elo back in for Duke. Ingram to serve. White had it blocked. In the middle again, Anadi, who has been so good at the net for South Carolina today. Yeah, she's been all over the place with a couple blocks now to her name getting up there. And, you know, I said Duke needs to get their middles involved, but maybe this is why they haven't, because they know Anadi's there, um, kind of as a wall there guarding the net uh, today. Gamecocks stretch the lead out to two. It's been played within a two-point swing really the entire third set. Here's another attack and another kill. Elena Johnson picking up her ninth kill of the day. See if somebody else on the Gamecock squad can get into double digits as they work to build this lead. Whitesides has 16 to lead all players. Another serve here from Jordan. Elo had it tipped and Duke able to pull it within two. Elo did a great job of following that set. Sometimes when the libero passes it um, for like a pass set, that can be so high up. You got to track, 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 and you can't really do your normal step, your normal approach. Um, but she did a great job following the ball and finishing. Woo. Anadi again. Just cannot give her that much space in the middle. Yeah, way too much space for Abby Anadi there. Her third kill of the day. Not putting up the numbers, but her presence is being known. Just another weapon that South Carolina has. Someone else that you've got to contend for, right, mm -hmm. if you're Duke? Penn sets in the middle for Cato. Great dig by Harris. Back row attack here. 
Well, that was just a misplay. And it works out for Duke. Better to be lucky than good if you're the Blue Devils. <laughs> They slow down South Carolina's run right there with a two-point lead. The Gamecocks trying to pull away. Anadi. Pin keeps it going. Now Elo. Back row. Dig by Harris. Whitesize has to get it over. She does. Duke looking for the bump set and spike. They got the spike with Cato, but it's blocked out. And Duke to the one. That's why they call it a free ball, because it's supposed to give you a free play, be able to do something with it. And that's what Duke's been taking advantage of. Going to try to tie this one up right now. Blue Devils have scored the last two. Nearly an ace. Sent over that time by Paris, who just came in for the first time today. Elo had it blocked, and South Carolina stretches the lead out to two. Campbell Paris, the sophomore out of Illinois, playing in just her fifth set this year. 23 games last year. Nine games with 10 or more kills. She's somebody that can be a force at the net. She's 6'5", yeah. able to tower over that net. Elo with the right hand. Duke to within one. And Gazi Elo. In the double figure, she's had a nice match for Duke for the second straight day. Yeah, Duke a very balanced attack as this match continues. They've now got three players in double digits, while South Carolina still just has white sides with 16. Duke had four in double figures with kills in the season opener against Colgate. That ball hit the antenna. So Duke will get the point and be awarded the tie. Seems like right when South Carolina pulls their momentum, there's an error or, or a miscue, and Duke is able to take back that momentum, and that's what they're doing right now. That might have been going out. South Carolina plays it anyway. One of those 50-50 balls, you're really not sure. Whitesides answers for the Gamecocks. Subs for both teams. Underwood in for Duke. Nicole in for South Carolina. Gamecocks trying to add to the one-point lead. Kato had it blocked. But it hit the antenna. And the Blue Devils get the point off the block. The re-block attempt there by South Carolina. Duke able to take advantage of a great pass and a great set. That slide over there, distracting the blockers a little bit. Not a tight block. 14-14, Duke looking for the lead. Cato serves it out. And Duke with their 10th service error of the match sends us to a timeout here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. 15-14, South Carolina with the lead midway through this third set. This is not going to be what you want to see. <laughs> A lot of service errors today. What do you think this next one's going to be, Amanda? A service error? Probably oh, a service error, yes. darn. And <laughs> Blue Devils have 10 of them this afternoon. And to your point earlier, it's been a variety of players and a variety of different errors for the Blue Devils, which is to Duke's benefit, South Carolina has not been able to take advantage of it. I agree. And the biggest thing we talk about is momentum in this game, but it's also how you respond. So for Duke to be able to have these, have 10 service errors, yet still be in these games, that says a lot for their ability to, to keep pushing. And yeah, it also says a lot, like you said, South Carolina not taking advantage like they should. <coughs> it's kind of like back in the day, you're probably too young to remember this, <laughs> that Oprah had a TV show. And, yes. and she's like, you get a car, you get a car, yes. you, you get an error, and you get an error, and you get an error. But I don't think these people want errors, though. That's the thing. Cars, we, free cars. We'd rather have some aces today. <laughs> South Carolina by a point. Third set here at Cameron. And again, not much Kerry Keith could do on that powerful swing down the line from Johnson. One ace. 
one error for South Carolina today. South Carolina maybe not serving as aggressively as Duke is this afternoon. Godshaw sends it over. Back set. Keith digs it out. Ingram again. Nice play by Harris. Back row. White sides. Back row for Duke. Flipped over by White sides. Set for Keith. And another hitting error for the Blue Devils. A Duke team that's hitting just 140 here in set number three. Yeah, both teams haven't been doing well when it comes to efficiency um, on their hitting, but both of them able to kind of ground out, grind out this win here. South Carolina has matched their biggest lead of this third set. Looking for a four-point lead. Underwood just punches that one. Duke's got to get it over here. Take advantage of the free. The set this way. Wow. Oh, a great dig by Godshaw. Now bumped over by Ingram. South Carolina can set it up again after the free ball. White sides of the powerful swing. Keefe was there. Ingram to the back row. Another nice rally. Short. Tipped around, and another one for Elena Johnson to put the Gamecocks up by four. Great job by South Carolina to read the room in a way. They've had all these powerful hits this rally, but to be able to read your blockers, tip that over Elena Johnson, really stepping things up here. She's got 12 kills now right alongside Whitesides with 17 as just the two players for South Carolina in double digits. Jolene Nagel and the Blue Devils taking a timeout there. Four. And a service error. Stop me if you've heard that before today. <laughs> Just the second against the Gamecocks. But Coach Nagel always talks about the importance of serving tough as a team. Blue Devils have done that today. Just unfortunately have not had many aces to show for it. Johnson played by Godshaw. Here's the rookie, Williams. Dumped over right for Penn. They set it up for Keefe. Uh, and Keefe, still they're gonna call her into the net. 19-15 South Carolina. That was a hard ball to work yeah. with. The set was really close to the net. Uh, you just gotta be careful in those situations. And then you're steering down, you know, two six foot uh, volleyball players on the other side. Not a lot that Kerry Keefe could do there. And this would give South Carolina their biggest lead of the second set. And they do. In the middle of Nadi with another block. That's her fourth block of the day. And when it matters right here, we were all following the ball. She knew it was coming. She was ready for it. Doesn't even have to jump up too high because her arms reach over the net already. Pin. Oh, another oh. really tough set there. South Carolina by a 21-15 margin. And perhaps Duke may be thinking about another timeout. All the momentum with South Carolina now. That's out. Duke asking for a touch. And they will get it. So there was a tip that does break the service. And the Blue Devils back on the board. Taylor Williams to serve. That's out. Another attack by Johnson, a little long, and Duke with back-to-back -back points. South Carolina just can't put it away. White sides, oh, a powerful swing. 
18 yep. kills, sorry, Amanda, for Riley Whitesides. Yeah, no, those can be the toughest kills or hits to try to block because when they're coming from the middle back, you have no idea where they're going to swing that. And Whitesides has done a great job of not giving too much away with her body. Somehow that one got over. Pin handled it. Keith had it blocked. And another point for Duke. Godshaw to serve. Anadi with another one. Duke with no response there. That was such a fast set, but Anadi was ready. The chemistry between your setter yep. and your middle has to be phenomenal because the timing is everything when it comes to that swing. It happens way too fast, and it has to be at the perfect time for Anadi to have her full wind up for that power. Double double for Sarah Jordan, the setter today for South Carolina. 34 assists, 11 digs. She has really been the calming force in this South Carolina offense. Another set, Anadi again, and it's set point for South Carolina. Anadi knowing when to use that power and when to use the placement, and there we saw the brains behind her kill. Prompts Duke to use their final timeout. Jolie Nagel trying to squash the momentum for the Gamecocks as they are now facing Molt. Then you're not wanted here. Pretty strong words. Volleyball and I mean most sports, it's it's all about mentality and the way that you approach the day and they want to give it their all each day and that started in practice this offseason. Gamecocks serving for the third set. And they get it. An error by Cato, South Carolina leading two sets to one and can close out the match in the fourth set. South Carolina holds Duke. He's 20 digs in a game since 2014. Oh, As a freshman already doing this, making history or soon to be making history here for South Carolina. Playing in just your third collegiate game, starting for the Gamecocks. The libero gets the play there. A swing for Johnson. Back row and out. Gamecocks on the board first. It'll be Jordan to serve. Double-double for her today, 35 assists, 12 digs, a block, and an ace. And, wow, what a surprise, another service error. South Carolina with their third service error today. Duke has had 10 miscues at the service line this afternoon. That one served in, really tough serve that time too by Duke. Played nicely by the rookie Williams. Now how about Anadi setting that one up to keep it going for the Gamecocks and a little bit wide there for Kerry Keefe. I don't think Anadi knew exactly what to do, so she just <laughs> tried it, set it straight up in the air. Sarah Jordan comes in and she's like, all right, I'll take care of this. Leave it to the professionals, yeah. right? <laughs> South Carolina out to the early lead. Here comes the serve for Johnson. I am curious about these service errors that we've seen as that one blocked, good rally. Ingram swings and scores. The fact that we've seen 13 combined service errors today, could that be a product of the fact that it's first we'll take a look at the replay. Great dig for, from Duke, setting up the big swing. Block just in the wrong position there, and Duke taking advantage. But could the 13 combined errors be a byproduct of this is the third game of the weekend, and maybe the legs are a little tired for both these clubs? I'd like to think that you should be at your peak the more games you play. This team is figuring themselves out, so you should be finding success knowing what you can do and what you're capable of. I can't imagine it's fatigue. These are athletes. These are uh, women that have been preparing for the season all offseason. Carrie Keefe with her 16th kill to lead the Blue Devils. Must win set here for Duke. Anadi with the tip. Pin the set. Ingram the attack. 
White sides. Beautiful set. And a better swing. Gamecocks back even. Whiteside pops up to 19 kills now. Her career high is 23, so she's been up here in these big double digits before. Performing like an all-SEC caliber player, as her head coach said that she certainly looked like one. Keefe, and not much that Jordan could do there. Jordan was upset with herself, probably she couldn't rotate over even quicker. I think sometimes South Carolina's back row is so used to their block taking the edge off the hit sometimes that when it comes down that fast, it's hard to react. Keith to serve for the Blue Devils. Do we even talk about it at this That's point? That's the 11th one for Duke today. I have a feeling they're going to be doing some drills at practice next week. But Duke has been serving so well over the weekend. We mentioned it earlier. Duke 15 aces and 19 errors over their first two matches. 11 errors today and only the one ace. And you stretch those 11 points out over the course of a match. Mm -hmm. Really impactful. Especially with these type of games, too. When you look at who has these service errors, there's five players with at least two service errors. So it's a variety of players uh, messing up with the momentum of this game. Blue Devils oh, leading by a point. White sides. Oh, a great dig by Ingram. They'll try it again. Dumped over and the put away for Sarah Jordan. Jordan just being aware of what she can do with that ball. It was a little tight to the net and then being able to be getting up there, being physical and being able to direct the ball, knowing there's an opening spot there. Jordan oh. no, couldn't quite get there. Tough one to handle there for South Carolina. And now Riley Cato back at the line. Cato getting some instructions from her head coach as we do a little house uh, keeping. Now we're ready. Gamecocks tie it up. Here's Cranford back in. Has some SEC ties in her family, her dad and uncle, baseball players at Georgia. Mom played volleyball at Colorado Mesa, and now in her junior year in Columbia, off the tip, Duke answers right back. Penn and Keith back in for Duke. McElveen coming back in for, or check that, it's Ruprich who comes back in for South Carolina. Grace Penn to serve. Serves that one in, tough ball to handle. Here's the set from white side, or four right sides. Now Keefe with the left hand. Jordan tipped over and white sides with her 20th. Three away from matching her career high. It might not have been pretty, but South Carolina found a way to win that rally there, whether it was the dig that, you know, with the two hands, you're trying to get the ball up, finding any way it's a hustle play to get the ball over and white sides being able to clean up there for the kill. Sarah Jordan to serve. Keith, a little disjointed there. 
And now another chance for South Carolina, blocked. Set up. Down the line, Godshaw got enough of it to keep it alive. Williams the attack. And the put away again for Johnson. She has a dozen. Johnson is one of the players I talked to a couple weeks ago before this season who really emphasized wanting to get back into the postseason. Uh, she's a junior, so she hasn't been to the postseason with this team as South Carolina has missed it the past couple of years, but they know what they're capable of. Um, and you can see in their fight uh, this weekend that they want to be that team that makes it in the postseason this year. South Carolina has not been to the NCAA tournament since 2019. Back-to-back -back appearances in 18 and 19, but they've gone begging since. Blue Devils with an easy point here. And the SEC only getting tougher to get through for them with Texas and Oklahoma coming in. Texas, two-time reigning champions. Preseason pick to win the SEC, no surprise there. ACC got a lot tougher in the offseason as well with the additions of Stanford, Cal, and SMU as that one dropped into the bottom. SMU picked to finish sixth. Stanford picked to finish second. So you have Texas in the SEC, which makes it tougher, yes, but now you add in a Stanford program in the ACC. Perennial power with the likes of Pitt and Louisville who have been to the Final Four in each of the last couple of seasons as well. Not an easy road for anybody in either yeah. of these leagues. Yeah, I mean, the ACC has sent somebody to the Final Four um, since 2021, and I don't think that'll, that'll be stopping anytime soon. Oh, what a point for South Carolina. Oh, my goodness. That just rolled right along the net and somehow, some way, found the inside of the line there. Oh. Smith was surprised herself. She's like, no way that went in. That might be the defining moment of this fourth set. Duke thought it was touched. The officials disagreed. And a timeout called by the Blue Devils. Duke trailing by three. South Carolina with a ton of momentum. They lost to this season, but she's been able to really helped them out to get them in rhythm for offense. And I do want to say each set has been more competitive as this day goes on. In yep. the first set, we only had one tie. Second set, you had eight ties with just one lead change. Third set, seven ties. And now in the fourth set, already eight ties, and it's 11 to eight right now. So this could be back and forth unless someone starts to pull away. Sarah Jordan is going to go over and talk with the chair here about something. Have a little bit of a, of a delay. We've gone to the monitor as well. Not quite sure what's being reviewed. Duke did call the timeout. And I don't remember anything on that final play that would warrant a, a review from either side. So the referee is over to take a look at the monitor. South Carolina leading 11 to 8 here in the fourth set. We've had a couple of these like challenges and looks at calls, and that's what happens when you have these close games when every point matters because that's a chance to take back the lead and tie it up. And Duke wanting a shift of momentum right now. Whatever they were reviewing, it seems that like we have a conclusion. Well, whatever it was, we have no idea. We continue to be left in the dark. No challenge. Duke can retain their challenge. So whatever Joey Nagel was attempting to challenge, either was not challengeable, or the officials deemed that it was not a challenge because maybe it came after the timeout was called. Mendoza looks just as confused as we do. <laughs> Tom Mendoza wanting an explanation.
Bit of a wry smile. So, after all that, yeah. <laughs> we continue. 11 to eight, South Carolina by three. Pin for Keefe. South Carolina setting it for a back row attack off the tip. Johnson with another. She has 14 and the Gamecocks lead by four. Johnson has really been able to draw Duke's attention to her. And I wonder if South Carolina will take advantage of that and try to get white sides more active or pull in Smith. It's her received by Ingram. She'll get a chance to attack. Jordan setting it up for white sides. Dumped over in the middle, and a nice play by the freshman, Brianna Goss. She's been quiet today, just three attacks. Now her first kill, and breaks the South Carolina 4-0 run. Yeah, just a freshman, but she comes from a history of success at her high school, back-to-back -back, uh, state championships, holds their hitting percentage record, so she's got a lot of potential. Blocked by the Blue Devils. Riley Cato in the middle. Duke to within two. Duke's been able to bite back here with their own net play. They've got four blocks now versus South Carolina's seven. This is a Duke team that didn't have any blocks at all in the first <laughs> set. The block is really picked up for Duke. South Carolina continues to swing it aggressively. Keith with the left hand. And not much the Gamecocks could do there. Key for their 18th kill. Elena Johnson was back there, but that's a hole your block normally covers here. We'll see South Carolina slide on over, but Anani just doesn't cut it the right way, and Duke takes advantage. Blue Devils have scored the last three, now serving for the tie. A Baker's dozen for the Blue Devils in service errors this afternoon. I am curious what Coach Nagel is thinking. Because like you said, they have been pretty consistent with their serving. And this if this is a problem now, you worry, you know, is this going to be a problem later in the season? Tough serve there by the Gamecocks. Good serve receive. And then Keefe could not float that one in. Johnson nearly collided with the line judge there. They both were just staring at the ball as they Watch this. watched it pass. Right into your living rooms. She already had her hand up. Johnson already with her hand up that it was out while she <laughs> tracked the ball. That's when you're just manifesting it. Harris serves it. Whitesides had it blocked. Good dig out by Johnson. Whitesides tries again and can't connect. Sometimes it's a great idea to go back to the, the hitter that just tried to kill it because it throws off the block. But in this way, Duke was prepared for that because Whitesides has been South Carolina's go-to with 20 kills so far today. Here's Kerry Keefe. That one served in. Right at the net, in the middle, it's blocked. Pinballs around. Harris sends it over. Cato, yes. Her 15th. Jordan in the right position there, but just wasn't low enough. Maybe needed to take a step up. That ball coming down pretty fast from Duke. Riley Cato. South Carolina by one. Each team with a timeout left. Gamecocks trying to close it out in four sets. Each team has gone one and one here this weekend, both beating Colgate and falling to 13th ring Kansas. Boy, the Jayhawks looked impressive over the three matches here with three impressive victories. Coach Mendoza telling us earlier, they obviously South Carolina opened up their season against the Jayhawks, and he said they're more of a like a top 10 team than a, a number 13 team. Tyra Smith there with the kill. Just talked about maybe getting her more involved. And that one probably would have gone out, but uh, just tempting enough for Duke to put a put a hand up. McGovern to serve. Blocked. Cato. Ingram. Out. 
Right now, South Carolina by three. Does Duke want a challenge? Let's take a look here. I think that's probably a good call from the replay we saw. Jolie Nagel will ask to take a look. So another challenge here. Blue Devils, remember they had that non-challenge challenge earlier this set, so they retained their challenge, and now the officials will take a look. Take another glance at it, Hill. Remember, Duke is challenging the touch on this swing down the line from Ingram. McElvin listening to her teammates as South Carolina was screaming out when this ball came over the net. She pulls her hands away. She's got the best view in the house of that ball. Yeah, I think that's clearly a no touch. And certainly understand it from a Duke perspective, trying to capture any sort of momentum that you can. Especially when South Carolina has a three-point lead right now. Free timeout for both teams as well. They've had a lot of those <laughs> today. We have. Getting you right into the heart of the action there. Coach Mendoza waiting for the verdict. Just don't understand what's taking so long. They got to make sure they get it right. I guess. That's what I like to think. Crucial call here, though. I mean, certainly a 17-13 lead or 16-13 lead for South Carolina is a lot more dangerous than perhaps a two-point advantage. And Duke would also lose their challenge for the remainder of this fourth set and what is a must-win set for Duke. South Carolina won the opener. Duke a nip-and-tuck second set victory before South Carolina pulled away late to win the third stanza. Gamecocks will continue a tough non-conference stretch Taking on another ACC foe next weekend, North Carolina comes to Columbia along with Temple and College of Charleston. And then Stetson, FIU, Wake Forest all on the schedule for the Gamecocks before they start Southeastern Conference play at the end of the month against Mississippi State. Also the traditional game at Clemson, sandwiched in the non-conference too. Yeah, that'll be a big one. They got the best of Clemson uh, last season, and it just means so much to those teams in the rivalry. I'm sure Duke and UNC duke it out as well. So uh, rivalries are big games. But right now they're forming, they're growing, they're working through things to be ready for when conference play begins. Point for South Carolina. Call is confirmed. Coach Nagel gets the explanation. And now South Carolina by three. Nine points away from putting away the match. Blue Levels have changed setters here. Nikki Quinn has come in. And South Carolina on the board again. Another miss hit there for the Blue Devils. We've seen Quinn play each of the first two matches for Duke here this weekend. The redshirt freshman earned her first career start against Colgate, averaging just over seven assists per set so far for Duke. Blue Devils maybe trying to get a little more of a different look offensively as Ingram sends that one right toward the torso of White Sides and gets the kill. The sixth for the rookie. White Sides in the right spot, but the ball in the wrong spot for her, taking that one in the chest. Now Ingram serving to pull Duke even closer. Here's White Sides. Williams up to play it. Elo with the left hand. Whitesides again. Her 21st of the match. And two off of her career high. Gamecocks by four. Some authority behind that one. You could see maybe some frustration building in for Whitesides. Hey, that's the best way to take it out. Take it out on the ball. Whitesides again with the serve. In the middle, Elo with the answer for Duke. 13 kills for Ngazi Elo. 
great set from Nikki Quinn, too. Perfect timing there. Great communication. Not on South Carolina's side, though. Middle blockers nowhere to be found to slow that one down. Hilo has set a new career high seemingly in every match this weekend in kills. What an answer there for South Carolina. You talked earlier about the need to go to someone like a Ruprich, and they do here to get the point. Yeah, she's been a force, but she's just been a quiet force. But now she's making some noise here when the Gamecocks need her most. Duke has one timeout left. South Carolina looking for a five-point lead. Cranford with the serve. Elo the attack. And the Gamecocks five points away from a fourth set victory. And Duke will use its final timeout. All sorts of momentum now for South Carolina. Blue Devils are out of timeouts and challenges. You saw the referee tell Coach Nagel that. So the Blue Devils can not do anything else to stop any South Carolina momentum. Gamecocks looking for another point. Tough serve. In the middle, a powerful swing by the rookie, Brianna Goss. And it is this group of freshmen that have been very impressive for Duke on opening weekend. Duke taking advantage of South Carolina's not quickness to, to rotate. Obviously, Cranford with the serve having to fly into her position, but Duke set it up the offense so quickly that Cranford was caught off guard. Four point lead for the Gamecocks. Grace Penn back in there to serve. Nearly the first ace in a long while for the Blue Devils. Set in the middle. Great pancake there by Harris. Duke trying to get back in system after the free ball. It's Goss who had it blocked. Hits the antenna. Tried to finesse one over and the Gamecocks win the point. Starts with a great defensive play again from the Gamecocks. So defense getting Duke out of sorts there. And it's the defense that gets the point for South Carolina. Now Williams deposits that one to the back row to keep the Blue Devils within shouting distance. Half a dozen kills now for the rookie. We talk about the defense for South Carolina on the swing that's blocked out. South Carolina has forced Duke to hit just 190 for the match today. This is back-to-back -back games where Duke has really struggled with the hitting percentage. Duke hit just 119 against Kansas in that four-set loss on Saturday. Coach Nagel still trying to figure out her lineup, so running through a lot of players to see who could be the most consistent. In the middle of Nadi, finesse play. Duke whale out of sorts here, trying to get back in system as Anadi with the whiff and then the block by the Blue Devils. The attack by Smith, and it's Ingram on the block. Big play from the Blue Devils, able to slow down South Carolina here. Smith with a big swing, but a solo block from Ingram. One of the few solo blocks we've seen for the Blue Devils today, but that could be a big weapon for Ingram moving forward this year. 22-18 Gamecocks, White sides with another kill, her 22nd. And I think you're right about that anger coming through the swing there. It seems to be getting more powerful as they can feel how close they are to closing out this match. And it's the rookie Harris who can serve for the penultimate point of the match. She had four aces yesterday, haven't put one up so far today. Duke doing a good job of returning her serves. Aces have been a hard thing to come by for both clubs today. Wide sides off a tip. Here's the swing by Ingram. The rookie does it again for the Blue Devils. That's on Sarah Jordan, who's actually done such a great job of getting to the ball, but that time the tip was just gentle enough and Duke did a good job of not giving away uh, what their plan was. Kerry Keefe puts it in action. Whitesides, Duke down three. A little too 
powerful on that one for Riley Whitesides. Too much anger on that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Key forcing a timeout by the Gamecocks. Duke has pulled two and then three. And sis, your second conference game, reigning national champs. It's almost like you got to be playoff ready by that game, right? The, the way their schedule is, you got to be playoff ready like tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Chance for a resume building win for the Gamecocks today. Th uh, two points away from winning it. Kerry Keefe will serve. Trying to keep the Blue Devils within striking distance here. It's a powerful block again by the Blue Devils. Another chance for Whitesides. A finesse play that time. Good dig by Underwood. Ingram goes short. Whitesides plays it. Here's the swing for Smith. That is out. And Duke to within two. Smith with her fourth error of the day. But she has seven kills. She's capable of working around that block. That time just a little bit too much heat. White sides. And it's match point for South Carolina. Matches her career high with 23 kills. And the Gamecocks closing in on their second victory of the weekend. You talk about resume building performance, but also confidence yep. building. This is a team that does have a lot of new pieces. So to be able to pull out a close game like this could do a lot for them as far as building up confidence. That is out and the Gamecocks win. South Carolina in four sets with their second victory of the weekend behind a balanced performance, but a nearly career day from one of their senior leaders, Riley Whiteside.